Aloha, I'm Ryan Ozawa, Communications Director for Hawaii Information Service with a quick video update. It's been a very busy few days here in our nation's capital at the annual mid-year conference for the National Association of Realtors. Wednesday brought keynote speaker Mike Huckabee, now a presidential candidate, but more notably, we also visited Capitol Hill where we joined with colleagues from the Hawaii Association of Realtors to bring the voice and concerns of local real estate to our congressional representatives. HIS President Faith Geronimo and Colleen Yasuhara, our VP of Sales and General Manager, attended several MLS policy and executive sessions. Meanwhile, Webmaster and Project Manager Michael Torres and I attended sessions on topics ranging from commercial and rental real estate to emerging technology trends and the future of Realtor.com. We visited the trade show to meet with vendors and see what other technologies and tools are now available to brokers and realtors. Today is our last full day here with more meetings and leadership and policy sessions, but for this update, we wanted to focus on the latest information from NAR and the FAA on the use of unmanned aircraft systems, or drones, in real estate. The morning session was titled, When, Where, and How Can I Use My Drone? A Regulatory Update, and the panel included Bill Crozier, Assistant Manager for the Federal Aviation Administration's Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration Office, Leslie Walker, the Associate Counsel with the National Association of Realtors, and Douglas Trudeau, he's an Arizona realtor and he was the first real estate professional to get a Section 333 waiver to operate a drone for his real estate business. So what did we cover in the session? Well would-be commercial drone operators are still waiting for the FAA to release its final updated rules, although the draft rules have been published and the public comment period is over. The FAA says that drone regulations are a top priority of the agency, so while rulemaking takes about 16 months on average, it could take less time in this particular case. Until those are in place, the rules are clear. Drone or quadcopter operations are only allowed for hobby or recreational use. Not only does this exclude business use, but even for education. So where does that leave realtors? Well, a few good points did come up in today's session. For example, one regulation and penalties for violations of the rules are the purview of the FAA, and they are primarily focused on safety, not questions of commerce. So while NAR is partnering with the FAA on educational programs like Know Before You Fly and advising real estate professionals on the rules, NAR nor associations are typically involved in policing realtor members. But the panel did point out that liability is a separate issue. The FAA will get involved if someone was operating a drone in an unsafe way, and that's what they look to the public for help with getting reports of bad pilots. But as far as they're concerned, it's only the pilot, not the person who hired him or her, that will face any action. That said, uh, if a drone injures someone or damages property, well in that case, state and local liability laws and civil actions could apply. The FAA might not care that a realtor hired a pilot who crashed his drone into a crowd, but a lot of other people will. So, a lot of caution there. Until the new FAA rules come out and hopefully bring with them simpler guidelines and an easier way to get authorization to operate a drone, your only recourse today is to get what is called a Section 333 waiver. These are available to people with a pilot's license, or of course you can hire someone with a pilot's license to get the waiver and work with you, which is what Douglas Trudeau did in Arizona. With all the marketing coming from drone pilots hoping to get business capturing aerial views of real estate, how do you know that they're authorized to do that? Well, you can look them up on the FAA website at faa.gov UAS. You can ask to see their COA or Certificate of Operation, or you can look for a registration number, the N number on their aircraft. In addition, NAR is maintaining a list of authorized pilots who focus on real estate on its website at realtor.org. During the Q&A session, a Maui realtor was the first to the microphone to ask why a pilot's license was required at all. The law that establishes the FAA and basically allows us to do our regulatory role requires three things of every uh, civil aircraft operation. That it, the aircraft be registered, that the pilot be certificated, and that the aircraft have an airworthiness certificate. So Section 333 of the FAA Modernization Reform Act of 2012 uh, gave us the authority to exempt pilot, exempt operators from having that airworthiness certificate. It didn't give us the authority to not require a pilot certificate. So that's why we have to have one, because it's in the law. And we can't do exemptions to our rules that would be contrary to the law. But even with the pilot's requirement, it'll take some time to get a waiver. The FAA says they have 1,200 applications pending, approving about 30 or 40 a week. 
and that's actually a huge increase from March when they could only process a handful a week. This intense interest is clearly why the FAA is moving as fast as it can to open up our skies to commercial drones. Another good question, what if a homeowner took drone footage of her home then gave it to the realtor for use in marketing? Well, the FAA says that it's the purpose of the flight that's key. If the video came from a hobby or recreational use of a drone, it doesn't matter if that footage is later used for a listing or if that footage is even sold, but that could lead down a slippery slope for sure. The main focus of the session was education. Just yesterday here in DC, another person was arrested for operating a drone near the White House. Commercial airline pilots are still reporting seeing drones operating in restricted airspace every week. So on this front, the FAA says it is working on an app, a mobile app that will help people tell if they're in restricted area. And meanwhile, the NAR will continue to work with the FAA to keep its professional members up to date on the rules as well as possible opportunities. For example, on June 23rd, there'll be a webinar on the Section 333 waiver process. And as always, a great resource to always check is knowbeforeyoufly.org. Well, the HIS delegation heads home tomorrow, but we're not done processing all the great information we've gathered here in D.C., so stay tuned. Until then, mahalo.